today we are going to talk briefly about Greek and Roman. Because this is only a video and a short one, we are just going to basically talk about its history timeline. We are not going to go deep into it. If you want to know more information about it, please view another video. Okay, starting from Greek. So ancient Greek is actually the most civilized part in Europe back then, of course. And ancient Greek is not a country, but an area that have like many small ports, city states that develop by itself. Okay, so why this happened? We need to go into Greek geography. So Greek is actually located on Plankin Peninsula. Take an area of 13 square kilometers. Well, inside the landform, there are many mountain territories, sea and island formation that create natural barrier. This make it hard for like poles to interact with each other. So at first, all the poles just develop independently. Okay. So this is the basic geography. We are not going to go deep into its clothes, the tones and it's food, not going to happen. It may happen in the next video, not this one. Okay, so we're first going to talk about Greek civilization 1.0. Okay, so it actually is a civilization that starts on Crick Island, known as Minoasian. Pronunciation issue, just like I said in the other video, please forgive it. And later on, when Minoasians kind of decline, some of the Greek on like inland ports start to develop. So this is Greek civilization 2.0. Mycenaeus. And then the famous war, I believe everybody's looking at this video, probably know about it. The Trojan War. Happened in Mycenaeus period. Okay, after children be defeated, well, how do they be defeated? Remember the Trojan Wood Horse? <sighs> Strange story. In mythology, they said it's because children leader take away one of the wife inside the land, the most beautiful woman. But for me, I think like a people in power will not go and fight against another city by just women. Probably there are other some political issue involving it. Not in this video. Maybe we will discuss this in future. Okay, after children be defeated, the Manician period start declining and kind of go to end. And then we got into another area called Anchor the Period, which is like all the poles and there are two poles very strong, one with Athens, the other with Sparta. Well, Athens and Sparta are not friends. They kind of just fight against each other. Athens care more about like literature, art, and they are good at navy. But Sparta, they are a military society. As keyboard, they are trained as soldiers. So they actually have a very good military power on land. Okay, they fight against each other. But later on, a place called Persia trying to take over Greece. Why they trying to do that? Hmm. There was a theory about in that time Persia had a leader who loved eating fish and the best fish is in Greece. So he tried to take over Greece so he can have all the fish. Personally, I do not really believe in that series. You fight Star War because you want to eat fish. Okay, keep going. So it started the Grisco and Persian Wars. Well, suddenly the two enemies, Athens and Sparta, work together and lead many small wars and defeat Persia. After this end, there was
close a peace agreement for some time, but you know, you don't have a um, same enemy anymore, and you don't like each other for many years, something going to happen. Yeah, there was a war happening. It was called the Polar Peninsula Death War. It takes 11 years. And then Sparta has only people who are alive. But there are some good leaders in Athens. One of them is called Periscus, which is the one who was leading Athens during the war. He actually have a very good strategy. He moved all the role plays, food support inside the wall. And then stand navy to attack Sparta's base. Well, he finally went over the advantage, but it was a democracy. If he can keep standing attack, the end of the war may be changed. But unfortunately, he did not do so because all the people voting against him think they should just stay behind the wall and defend. Well, later on, a disease comes and then Athens lose. If it was not democracy, if Hercules can send all his army to attack, the end of the war may be changed. Okay, so keep going. Well, when they keep fighting, Athens lose, but Sparta also lose many power too. Well, as people are fighting, according to history, there will be a place which will be a small people waiting for the time to get power. At the north side of Greece, there was a place called Macedonia, which is the birthplace of Alexander the Great. Everybody know Alexander the Great, he had power and keep fighting towards east, and he got into India. He built an empire that crossed Asia, Europe, and Africa. Amazing people! Well, he gets so much power. Is there any place for him to improve? Well, Alexander the Great said, I can go onto the sky. And then he died. Well, after he died, his father just split his empire and get power by himself. Sad story. Okay. Later on, there was the star of Roman period. Okay, so as Alexander the Great keep going east, they don't know the real danger is at the west. Greece is like always have a dream, just like Alexander the Great keep wanting to go to east. Well, Roma is different. It actually just take all the place it could at first. So as a historian, you try to boost your knowledge and show off your intelligence. Well, to show off your knowledge, you are sitting around the table. When some people start a topic of Roma, you can ask, are you talking about the Roma one period or Roma Republic or Roma Empire? This is enough to make 90% of people sitting around the table don't know what to say. Okay, so let's start from Roma's original. So Roma is start from like the Italian peninsula, and Roma the one is just monarchy. One king say everything, and people just follow it. But at last, there was like one king himself is not a great king, and he had very some. Just think of the war. Put war in if you want. So people do not really happy with it. So they push him over and start a Roman Republic. So Roman Republic is two consular and a hundred people form a Senate. To talk about Senate, we actually need to go into some social state. So in Roma, the social structure is Purchases, Colombians, and slaves. Purchases is the upper class, wealthy and rustic. Right. And 
Plumbius is Lorca for work and slave. You guys know what that means. Okay, so the Senate is elected by the purchases. And the Senate can elect the two counselors. In special circumstances, like suddenly happen a war, they need one leader, they will vote for a dictator, and after that, they will kick the dictator out. Okay, very good social structure. But some people may ask, I just think Athens allow everyone to vote. Why they only allow rich people to vote? That's not fair. Well, actually, the Polybians have their own power. They can vote for the representatives. But later on, as the aristocrats stay for too long, they gain wealth, gain power. They can pay money to change the ending. So, Polybians actually get weaker. Okay, too much here. Let's keep going on. So, as Roma expand from a small town to an emperor, and dictator will be retired, just like Savoyer, they will retire. But some don't want to retire. They want to be dictator for life. For example, Caesar, Julius Caesar. Well, he tried to be dictator for life, and the ending is him being betrayed by his friend, and everybody stabbed him, and then he died. Well, I believe there was the Julius Caesar the death in Shakespeare's writing. Well, it actually kind of coordinates with history. His friend, the standard, and the bridges, his best friend, betrayed him. And he wanted to be dictator for life. Those are correspond with history. But later on inside the story, there was Antonia and British wife. Well, Antonia trying to seize power and he married with Cleopatra. And of course they lose. They lose from Avenus, which is Caesar's nephew. Good story. And after Caesar's death, the Roman Republic actually ends very quickly. All of this, like, just get rid of half of the Senate and become dictator for life, just like emperor. And Republican turn to empire. Okay, Arvinius is actually the Roman Empire, the first king. Well, Roma expand bigger and bigger, spreading from Spanish to Turkey. Well, there was a person called Decalisian. What he do is very interesting. Because the country are too big, and there was only one leader, it's really hard for him to decide like, all the things. Inside the country. So that separate the kingdom to east and west. And then each place lead by one big king and one small king. This is known as like four kings rule together. Okay. As time go on, something happens. One of the king died and he has no one. Like no son, no trial to take his place. Well, the other three kings was like, oh, my nephew is good. No, my grandparents died. Ah, he should take his place. No, he should take his place. They all want to elect their own person to take their place. So they start fighting. And as they fight, there are many like small people want to take place too. They want the power. And at the most chaos time, there are six people set themselves as king. But later on, Justin the Great get rid of all of them and get back to the empire, the monarchy. Well, unfortunately, when something's separate, like a paper you split in half, even though you stick them together, you can still see the crack in the middle. As country be split, it's hard for people to come back together. Even Justin the Great cannot do it. So later on, the Roman Empire formally separate to West Romans and East Romans. This is the end of the story.
later on, we are going to keep going to European history. Okay, here is the citation. The citation is um, information from history class as a freshman, and also information from a book called 捡到崩溃的欧洲史, Write by Hunz. Thank you.